Welcome my students to the second part of our lecture today, the lecture three about enterobacteria C and uh, it will be about the enteric fever, which is very important part of our lecture today. Enteric fevers. Enteric fevers. Uh, enteric fevers are usually caused by Salmonella typhi and Paratyphi A, B and rarely C. The source of infection again is the stool or urine of cases or carriers. Carriers are important uh, part of the uh, important source of infection of enteric fevers, and we will know what we mean by carriers. As we said, the transmission of Salmonella is by uh, fecal oral routes, so stool or urine of cases or carriers play an important part in the transmission of disease. Now, after ingestion, the organism will multiply in the intestine. What will happen? The microorganism will gain, first of all, gain interest to the intestine. Here, the uh, condition, the pathogenesis. The microorganism will reach the intestine and it will multiply there. Then, uh, it will pass to the uh, lymphatics and this is the lymphatics and then it will reach the bloodstream then from the bloodstream it will pass to separate to the uh, liver spleen and uh, bone marrow now here it will be engulfed by phagocytes and multiplied intracellularly and then it will cause rupture of the phagocyte and it will release to the uh, bloodstream again so we have secondary bacteria, bacteremia, while here we have primary bacteremia and uh, after seeding inside these organs, liver, spleen and bone marrow, it will pass again to the blood in secondary bacteremia. Now the microorganism is isolated from the blood in the first week and uh, during the second and third week of the disease, the microorganism reach the gallbladder and pyrus patch and the uh, stool culture will be positive and the gallbladder is an important focus for carriers. The microorganism will remain inside the gallbladder in case of carriers and the uh, patient will continue to separate the microorganism and cause the infection. So carriers are very dangerous, very important source of infection because it may transmit the infection without noticing that. Now the manifestations appear after an incubation period and it will be manifested in three states. And these states are according to the uh, pathogenesis of the microorganism. Yani when they first pass in the intestine and pass to the blood, this will remain. This will represent the first stage of the disease, and then, when the microorganism pass from the blood to the organs, this will represent the uh, third stage of the disease. Now, what will happen in this stage? When sorry, when it passes from the blood to the uh, organs, this will represent the second stage of the disease, and then during the secondary bacteremia and return back to the uh, intestine or to the uh, gallbladder this will represent the third stage of the disease so accordingly uh, the symptoms and the laboratory diagnosis during these three stages will be represented by this pathogenesis now we can imagine from here from the entrance to the intestine and passing to the blood this represents the stage, the first stage, and then presence in the blood and passage to the organs. This will represent the second stage, and then passing again to the blood and return back to the uh, intestine by the biliary ducts and to the uh, bladder. This will represent the this will represent the third stage. Okay. Here, the first stage, here, the second stage, 
and this is the third stage now in the first stage the microorganism will enter the intestine about 1000 microorganism will enter the intestine so it is more toxic than uh, salmonella enteritidis or typhimoria which uh, require 1 million microorganisms to cause the infection now in the intestine then it will pass to the lymphatics then it will pass to the blood the symptoms due to the uh, spread of the microorganism within the within the blood it will be generalized symptoms such as malaise headache constipation backache and fever and fever and the fever is usually low grade at first when it is passed to the blood and become systemic the fever at first low grade then it will increase in step ladder pattern step by step now during this stage the blood culture will be positive because as we said the microorganism will pass to the blood so the blood culture will be positive the microorganism can be isolated from the blood but the stool the bone marrow and the urine cultures are negative because the microorganism still uh, does not reach to these organs does not reach to the bone marrow or other organs so the uh, bone marrow culture is negative the stool culture is negative here because the microorganism is still not found in large numbers there's no proliferation of microorganism so it is found in small numbers that cannot be detected by cultures but then later on when the microorganism will return again to the uh, intestine here we expect to have a positive stool culture but now because the microorganism is still found in small amount in the intestine it will be negative the blood culture will be positive the bone marrow and urine cultures are negative the Weidel test is negative now Weidel test is a serological test to detect the uh, antibodies against the antigens the salmonella antigens these antibodies of course need time in order to be created by the body so we will not expect to see these antibodies uh, directly after entering entering of uh, entrance of microorganism inside the body but it takes time in order for these antibodies to appear so in the uh, stage one the Weidel test will be negative this is about the stage one in stage two during this stage the microorganisms are phagocytosed and they multiply intracellularly and after rupture of these cells they invade various organs such as kidney liver spleen or any other organ in the body from the blood now here the condition is more toxic more severe the microorganism enter the uh, these organs so the patient will have high fever will be ill and toxic and on examination the patient will have hepatosplenomegaly jaundice rose spots on the abdomen and also the patient have leukopenia then leukocytosis now regarding the laboratory diagnosis what we will expect in the second uh, week second stage of enteric fever here the microorganism is found in the blood so the blood culture will start as positive then when it passes to the organs it will be negative so at first of the second week at the first the blood culture is positive and then when it enters to the organs the blood culture will be uh, negative at first it will be positive and then it is negative now the uh, microorganism regarding the organs at first there the microorganism is outside the organs so the uh, urine stool culture will start as negative then when the microorganism enter inside these organs the uh, stool and urine culture will be positive Weidel test in the second stage will be positive because the antibiotics uh, the antibodies are produced in this case this is about the uh, second stage of the enteric fever now the third week the microorganism will pass from the biliary ducts 
it will return back from the biliary ducts to the intestine in huge numbers in huge numbers so what we expect we expect to have a positive stool culture because the microorganism will return back to the intestine in huge numbers now it will invade the pyrus patch causing local lymphatic hyperplasia and may sometimes cause local ulceration and perforation of the intestinal wall and then death during this stage the patient will have diarrhea and other systemic manifestations and at the end of the week the patient may look better and the fever must subside this is if uh, in the case if the patient is immunocompetent but if the patient is immunosuppressive as we say there may be ulceration and perforation of the intestine now uh, what we expect to uh, see in laboratory diagnosis the stool and urine cultures as we said we expect them to be positive blood and bone marrow cultures will be negative and we dull test is positive now this uh, table can help you blood culture will be positive in the first week in the second week it will start as positive and then change to negative in the third week negative urine stool cultures is the opposite it will start as negative in the first week and then in the second week we start at negative and then pass to the positive in the third week they will be positive without test it's uh, negative in the first week in the second and third week it will be positive So these are the uh, symptoms that we can see in case of uh, enteric fevers, high fever, headache, weakness, dry cough. These are these are the uh, rashes, the uh, rose spots that we see in case of uh, enteric fevers and other uh, symptoms. Now we dial test. As I said, the we dial test measures the specific antibody titer of the patient serum to the typhoid antigens by hemagglutination. This test is used to detect the antibodies against H and O antigens of the salmonella. Inshallah, in the uh, practical labs, we will uh, speak in details about the uh, Widal test. So, we can wait until we start the practical labs to give you an idea in more details about the Widal test. The carrier state, as I said uh, they represent an important source of infection in case of uh, salmonella infection the person will continue to excrete the microorganism in their feces for up to one year following the remission so you can imagine the danger in this case that uh, about one to five percent will harbor the microorganism usually three percent and they will excrete the microorganism continuously and intermittently and they are important source of infection to susceptible persons so very very important that these carriers these carriers uh, should not work as food handlers otherwise they will transmit the infection to the uh, to many persons now the prophylactic uh, uh, methods most important is sanitary measures it is the most important part in case of salmonella is the sanitary measures and you can see here these are the sanitary measures washing hands drink boiled water clean fruits and vegetables and also uh, get vaccine and we have three types of vaccine which are the heat killed vaccines the oral vaccines and uh, capsular polysaccharides or salmonella typhi also carriers as i said must not be allowed to work as food handlers because they will transmit the infection to the uh, to other persons this is uh, about the prophylaxis the treatment uh, we divide the treatment according to the diseases that they cause so we have uh, enteric fever and bacteremia this is serious condition here we must give the antibiotics the most, uh, the drug of choice is ciprofloxacin and other common drugs are chloramphenicol, 
cotrimoxazole and ampicillin and drug resistant uh, drug resistance is uh, a problem here and antibiotic sensitivity test is required sometimes if there is resistance we give the third generation cephalosporins such as uh, cefetriaxones surgical drainage of metastatic abscess may be uh, required now uh, salmonella enterocolitis it is less severe condition as we said it does not require antibiotic treatment we give only support supported therapy by giving fluids to uh, replace the fluids uh, fluid loss due to diarrhea and uh, drugs to control hypermotility of the gut should be avoided anti-diarrheal drugs should be avoided otherwise trivial gastroenteritis may be transmitted into life-threatening bacteremia by paralyzing the bowel because the microorganism will penetrate the bowel and causing a threatening condition life-threatening condition so the uh, anti-diarrheal drugs drugs that decrease the motility of the gut should be avoided now chronic carriers how can uh, can be treated they be, they will be treated by antibiotic and if it is not enough then cholecystectomy because as we said the gallbladder represents the uh, source of infection in the carrier state so uh, first of all we give them antibiotics like ampicillin and ciprofloxacin and if it is not useful then cholecystectomy will be uh, used and uh, three percent of the patients will pass into the chronic carriers more commonly the chronic carriers more commonly will occur in uh, female three to uh, one more than male this is the appearance of salmonella on McConkey's agar it will appear as non lactose fermenter pale color colonies on you see methylene blue they will produce uh, metallic sheen and uh, black color colonies on the triple sugar iron agar they will produce alkaline slant on acidic pot with H2S will produce black color on salmonella shagella agar it will produce pale color colonies with black center also due to uh, H2S production this is the appearance on Salmonella Shigella agar for Salmonella uh, Shigella will produce only pale color colonies without black center because there is no H2S production and these are the uh, typhoid uh, fever prevention this is about the second part of our lecture today